Jesus, keep me from all wrong. Good morning. Just a closer walk with thee. How could we, in times we're in now and, the, and everything that's going on, how can we not want to walk closer to thee? You know, that's just a great introduction to our service today, and we just welcome you here to First Baptist Church of Decatur. Uh, we're online, Facebook Live. We have a few in the audience today. Uh, the internet, uh, YouTube will be pulled up a little bit later this morning, uh, so we hope you can join that. Uh, call somebody and let them know to, how to get a hold of us. Uh, if you can't see this online, if you talk to somebody and they can't, don't have any way to see it online, please encourage them just to come out to the service at 10 o'clock, Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, come to that. The next few weeks, uh, we're getting closer to hoping to be able to open back up. Uh, we're going to try a couple more weeks like this and then see how things are going, and then we'll go from there. So we ask you, encourage you to... to Tell somebody we're still here. Uh, if you need anything, please let us know. Uh, if you have no way of going or if you're down sick uh, and can't go, can't get out, we can set it on the porch. You can step out and get it the best you can. So we can take care of that. Uh, if your family, if you want to send Brother Craig Dale's family a card, uh, his address is in the office. You can reach out to Gail there, and she can get you that address and just continue to remember Craig and his family in, in your prayers. Uh, remember Miss Phyllis uh, Hale, uh, her sister Sylvia passed away uh, last night, so let's remember the Jackson family and the Ingram family, uh, just remember them. Uh, Gracie Neely's little eight-year-old girl is going to be having surgery uh, this week, uh, maybe tomorrow, <clears throat> and uh, she's having some problems, they don't really know what, so let's remember her tomorrow. And then Brother Jim will be having surgery on Tuesday, so just remember him, it's a, it's a just a one day surgery thing he'll be back home if everything goes well tuesday night so let's just remember him and beverly uh this week all the other people that we've been praying about for the past few weeks let's continue to remember them the ones that are sick uh the ones that are recuperating uh i've heard this morning that some are feeling better so let's just remember them and you know it's crazy one person in the house can have it the other person can't all these things going on so just uh just remember them. Can you remember the doctors and, uh, and the nurses and our school system, our teachers, our students? Uh, continue to remember all these. And remember our pulpit committee as they're continuing to work uh, searching for the pastor that God has for us. So continue to remember them. And just be with Brother Brad as he comes today to bring the message. Just remember him in your prayers. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning you've given us, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for the time we have to come to thy house lord whether it be uh on the internet or or however however it is lord that you're receiving that the people's receiving our word today lord that we just pray that you'll just lead god and direct lord we just trust that people will, will turn to you lord and want a closer walk with you through these times lord and we just pray that you be with our country our doctors and our nurses lord and emergency people our, our sheriff's departments all these people lord that are having to uh, do a little extra now, Lord. We ask you to be with all of them. We ask you to be with our pulpit committee, Lord. Just lead, guide, and direct them. The ones having surgery this week, Lord, and where sickness is at, Lord, and the death angels visited, we just ask you to touch and comfort all these. Lord, the many sick of our church and our community that we pray about every, every day, Lord, we just ask you to, to wrap your healing hands that your will be done in all these hearts and lives, Lord. We ask you to lay your hands on Brother Brad as he comes this morning, Lord, to bring your message. You'll just lead God and direct him, and we just ask your blessings on our staff here at the church, Lord, as they try to go day to day and, and do your will. We just ask all these things in your name, Lord. Just thank you for all the blessings of life. We ask all these things. Amen. 
Well, good morning. We want to welcome you to sing along with us this morning. We're going to sing Heaven Came Down and Trust and Obey. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins are washed away. family divine, justified fully through Calvary's love, oh what a standing is mine, and the transaction so quickly was made, when as a sinner I came, took up the offer of grace he did pop for he saved me, oh praise his dear name, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross a Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now I have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions of light. And it's because of that wonderful day, when at the cross I believe. Riches eternal and blessed supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross a Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He shed on our way. Let us do His good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and Trust. 
Good morning. It is a, a privilege and an honor to, to be here this morning. It's been, last time I preached was in November. So it's been a, it's been a long time and I know it looks different. You know, some of us are, are watching at home. We do have some in here. But the thing about it is we can still come together as a body and worship and sing praises to our Lord. And I want to encourage you at home, if you're watching it with your family, be, be involved in the singing. Be involved when we read the scripture. Because this is a day we set aside to, to bring glory to our Lord and our Savior. Uh, this morning we're going to be in, in the book of Matthew. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 4. Uh, we're going to start at verse 17 and read through 22. So if you have your Bibles, please stand. For that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of man. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him, and going on from there, he saw two others, brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Let's pray. Dear God, Lord, I want to I thank you for this day. God, I know churches across this land, God, are, are meeting in in different ways, Lord. But today we still can, can meet with you, God, and sing praises to you, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, as we, we look at this, this passage, Lord, that you, you open our hearts to it, God. And God, you show us what we need to see, Lord. And I pray that everything we do here, Lord, just brings you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, uh, We've got a, what, a, a week of 2021 under our belt. You know, I felt like when we celebrated the New Year, somebody should have went around and been hand out certificates. You made it through 2020. I mean, 2020 was rough. I mean, there is no doubt. Everything looked different. The way we, we did church looked different. I had a, a verse I picked up, adopted in March. It was uh, Philippians 3.14. It's where Paul talks about pressing on. And that's what we had to do all year last year. Like I said, church was different. Uh, in March, when, when everything started uh, changing and we saw people getting sick, you know, we as a church had to decide what to do. We ordered uh, hand sanitizing stations ordered stuff to clean the, the air, got a backpack sprayer to clean the pews. Uh, you know, we just wanted to, to try to stay connected as a body. Um, we wanted to get a service out on Sunday mornings. 
Uh, believe it or not, at one time we took the sound room and pulled it down and put it in front of the pulpit just in order to record a service. You know, we had to, to figure out ways to stay connected with our, our children, uh, how to stay connected with our youth and, and community. We had to press on. Schools look different. March, uh, they sent kids home with a packet. You know, they were hoping to eventually get to meet again, but that never happened. And as they're opening up for the new school year, you know, they had to plan on what that was going to look like. Teachers had to, to figure out a way to teach different. You know, I heard stories of some of the teachers actually having anxiety over what they was going to have to do. But they had to press on. Even shopping was different. My wife was ahead of the, the game on the online shopping. She, she loved that so she could just go pick up the groceries. I'm not like that. I don't know what I need until I have, have to have it. Um, I remember going, going over to the pig. Uh, I didn't know the rules. That's one thing. They should have gave you rules on what you can do and not do during a pandemic. I didn't know if I could buy chicken and hamburger meat. Was I allowed to do that? How many cans of corn was I allowed to have? I got yelled at twice. Once for being too close and, and once for wanting four cans of corn instead of two. But you can't make taco soup unless you have four cans of corn. But you had to press on. And that's what that, that whole year was about. But if you actually look at the verse Philippians 3.14, Paul's not talking about pressing on during hard times. Paul is talking about pressing on, moving, growing in the Lord. Paul knew that he had not reached perfection and he had spiritual battles still yet to fight. So Paul was pressing on toward the Lord. And that's what I want to do this year. I want to make this my verse with that truth and that understanding. I do want 2021 to look different. I don't want it to look different in the way we, we shop, in the way we do church. I want it to look different in the way I follow the Lord. I want it to look radically different. When I say radically, I mean completely, utterly different. I want people to be able to, to see me from afar and say, and that guy's followed the Lord. And I think as individuals, as a church, we can strive for that. When the community looks at this church, I want them to see a church that is following the Lord. So, so how can we make that look different? And I think it, it starts at, at just looking at this passage. Uh, you have Jesus starting his earthly ministry, and he says two words, follow me. And I think those are the two most powerful, life-changing words that we can hear, follow me. It's important to know who you're going to follow. If I was to put a sign-up sheet out there at the back of the church, say, hey, I'm going to go to South America, I'm going to lead, anybody who wants to go, we'll go to the Amazon and survive for a week. We're not going to take anything with me. You know, we're just going to try to survive. Uh, those that know me know that that's not a good idea. I have no qualifications. If you don't know me, you better find out. And then when you find out, you'll know it's not a good idea. But it's important to know the me we're following. Matthew gives us a clear indication of who the me is. And in Matthew 1, he, he talks about the genealogy of Jesus Christ. He says he is the son of David, the son of Abraham. He is the Savior, the promised Messiah to come from the kingly line of David from Abraham. He is the Messiah. Chapter 2, we have the birth of Jesus and the visit from the wise man. We have Matthew reading from the prophet Micah. He says, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people. He is king. He is ruler, and he is shepherd to God's people. He is sovereign 
overall. In Matthew 3, we have John the Baptist proclaiming that he is a savior. Not only the savior, he is a righteous judge. And then we have the voice from heaven coming saying, my son, who I, or my, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. In chapter 4, we have Jesus being tempted. He is led by the Spirit to be tempted. The last time, or the first time, the serpent tempted in the garden was a disaster. Jesus does something no one has ever done or will ever, ever do. He was obedient and faithful to the Father. So in just four and a half chapters, we know the me who is asking us to follow. He is the Messiah, the promised one. He is a righteous shepherd to God's people who is beloved by the Father and obedient and faithful to the Father. That is the me. My question is, do we know this me? Is this the me we trust and believe? Because there's some that don't. There's some that think Jesus was just a good man who did a few good deeds. But if we as a people, if we as a church, take what Matthew says and know that he is the Messiah, God wrapped in flesh, sent to us to dwell with us, to save us, then that, that me is worth following. And following can be hard. I mean, it, it can be hard. We, uh, several years ago, we took a youth trip to Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, I was asked to drive the bus. And uh, my wife and David, my father-in-law, was going to uh, go with us. They were going to handle all the cooking and everything. So uh, I'd already made up my mind. We met out here in the parking lot early in the morning, and I was going to follow David. Pretty simple. I'm going to follow him. Well, two hours into the trip, I lose David. I had no clue where I was going. I just kept going. Eventually, we, we got back in touch with David, and I got right back behind him. He had a, a bright red cattle or a horse trailer on his truck. So I could see it from afar, but I was right there, right on him. We get into D.C. in the middle of rush hour, and I think there's like, 12 lanes of traffic, cars everywhere, and not cheap cars either. You had Porsches, Lamborghinis, high-dollar cars. I had 15 or 16 youth in the bus hanging out the window screaming. But I had one go. I was going to follow David. If David went left, I went left. If he went right, I went right. You couldn't slide a piece of paper between his back bumper and my front bumper. I was not losing David. And the reason I wasn't going to lose him is because I trusted him. I knew he was going to get me where I needed to go. I just had to trust him and follow him. Following Jesus is hard. But we got to trust that he is the only one that knows where we need to go. But we have to be obedient. We have to trust him. And we have to stay focused. There's so many things going on in this world that we can focus on. We can focus on what's going on in Washington. We can focus on our 401ks, focus on the stock market, focus on our bank account. But that's not going to get us to where we need to go. And by focusing on all of that, we're losing focus on him. We have to focus on Jesus. Verse 17 says this. It says, For that time Jesus began preaching, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Following Jesus has its first step. Salvation. And, and that is the first step that we have to take when we want to follow him. And there's some out there that that haven't taken that first step. And I want to tell you, it's, it's not too late. Uh, you cannot never make that step. Uh, 
I gotta get a drink real quick. My mouth is parched. I haven't talked this long and I don't know how long. But it takes a it takes that first step. Salvation, that, that moment in your life when you know that that you're lost. That moment in your life when you know there is no hope and you you're in need of a savior. And and we have to take that step. And it, it's never too late. We surrender our life to him. And sometimes that's where we mess up. We surrender our life, but we don't surrender our whole life. We hold on to a little bit of it. We hold on to it because we, we want to have security. We want to have comfort. And, and when we feel God pulling or stretching us, we can move over here and say, no, I'm, I'm good, Lord. I'm good. When, he, when he's trying to, to make it to where we feel risk or or, or it's going to cost us, we want to hold on to that. When we surrender our life to the Lord, we res- surrender our whole life, not just part of it. And some of us need to, need to do that, need to let go. And we need to trust him because he is the only one that knows where we need to be. And then if you start in verse 18, it says, While walking by the Sea of Galilee... He saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. I tried to put myself in that situation. If I was on a boat by the Sea of Galilee with maybe brother and father working on the nets, and somebody walked up to me and said, follow me, what would my response be? What would I say? I think I'd probably ask a hundred different questions. Where are we going? How long are we going to be there? When are we getting back? Um, How much does it pay? Is there any risk involved? I would have thousands of questions. I would want it drawn out. And I, I couldn't imagine what Jesus' response would be if, if they had those questions. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to, you're going to follow me, we're going to do some miracles, but, but in the end, I'm going to be arrested, I'm going to be crucified, and you're going to have to flee. See, we don't have a drawn-out plan. All we have to do is trust that he knows where we're going. And he's going to safely get us there. You know, when uh, I worked for the utility board for, for 18 years, I felt God calling me, moving me into ministry. I didn't know what it looked like, but I, I could feel him doing that. At, at my job, I had security. I had everything I, I needed. I had uh, income. Uh, I knew the job. I was well at it. And then something started happening, a job here at the church, started opening up. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, nervous feeling you get in your stomach, butterflies? Well, I, I had the butterflies in my stomach because I knew that, that you know, this might actually happen. Um, we were going through everything, and uh, one Sunday, me and my wife was walking out the door, and one of the individuals that was trying to put everything together come up to us and said, hey, uh, we're going to try to get this for you to, to help you all out making this change. And my wife's response was, don't worry, God's got this. And when she said that, it was like a peace, a peace that only he can give came over me. We might be nervous and we might have that uneasy feeling in us when we're following the Lord, but he will provide you with a peace that only he can provide you. And I want to say, I'm not going out, and I'm going to make sure Milburn's recording this, I'm not going out and telling you to sell everything. I'm not going and telling you to leave your job. So if you call next week and say, hey, I just left my job, thanks for, for helping me figure that out. No, don't, because here's the thing. You're not following me. You're following him. 
I don't know what's best for you. God does. You have to let him and his will lead you. But how do we do that? Well, we have a relationship with him. Could you imagine what a, a relationship between a husband and a wife would look like if they only met once a week and maybe on holidays? There'd be no relationship. Why? Because you wouldn't have any kind of communication. It would be a lost relationship. We need to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. It's got to be on one that we meet with him daily in his word. And we communicate with him daily through prayer. That's when you have an intimate relationship. And that's when you can know what his will for your life is. So how do we have, how do we radically follow Jesus in 2021? First, we got to know the me. That he is the Messiah. The one that was sent to save and rescue us. We've got to have a starting point. For some, it's salvation. And like I said earlier, there is no it's too late point. You can always take that first step. And you might say, well, Brett, you, you don't know what I've done. And I'm going to say, let me show you what Jesus did on the cross. You might say, well, Brett, man, I've done some, some bad, awful things. And again, I'm going to say, let me show you what Jesus did on the cross. There is nothing you can ever, never not bring to him. Some of us need to fully surrender our life to him. We're holding on to, to part of it for, for different reasons. Some because we might not want to be stretched. We've got to fully trust and surrender our life to him. We've got to be obedient like the disciples. They didn't have a drawn-out plan of what was going to happen. They immediately left and followed him. And we had to have that intimate relationship, one where we meet with him daily. I know now with the way church is, if you look at it, in March, if we had to stay like this in March, it'll be a year that the church has been closed down, a year with no Sunday school, no prayer service, no body meeting. But that don't stop us, guys. We can still have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ. All it takes is us doing the work and, and being willing to get in his word, be willing to get on our knees and pray. And we got to trust him fully. Let's pray. To God, Lord, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for, for meeting with us here, God. God, I do want 2021 to look different for me, myself, but also for this church, God. God, let us be a people, Lord, that, that follows you, God, completely, Lord, that we, we trust that you and only you are the only one that knows where we need to go, Lord. Lord, we do thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Emptied of his glory, God became a man to walk on earth in ridicule and shame. A ruler yet a savior, a shepherd yet a lamb, a man of sorrow, agony, and pain. 
He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord.